Marion, you gotta try this. This is awesome. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm getting sick. Whoa. Whoa. Oh my god. Oh, I'm gonna throw up. For real? Now you're gonna have little circles on your face. Okay, let's not do that. Learn how to give a proper apologetic or defense for your faith with Battleship Apologetics this season on Creation Today, starting August 20th at creationtoday.org. Eric Hoven here from Creation Today, and I'm sitting down with James Walker, the president of Watchman Fellowship. He's a former Mormon and now uh, leads a group to help people come out of different cults, different religions, and see the truth of God and His Word. Mr. Walker, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Eric. Great to be with you. Okay, so you really used to be a Mormon. Man, I believed it with all my heart. I didn't just was a Mormon. It was my life. I believed it. I believed the prophet Joseph Smith was a prophet of God, that the Book of Mormon was the Word of God. Um, more accurate than the Bible. Wow. I, I was um, baptized when I was eight years old, received the Aaronic Priesthood of the Mormon Church. I did baptism work for the dead in the Salt Lake City Temple. Oh. Four generations on my father's side, my father, my grandfather, my great-grandfather. It was my life. Wow. What, what brought you out of this? What, was the, what, was the, what were the steps that made you go, hang on, this isn't, this isn't the truth? I'm assuming that's the conclusion you came to. You know, well, ultimately it was Jesus that brought me out. But the, but the way it happened is what God, what God did over a period of time in my life, God placed some key people in my life who loved me, were concerned about me, and took the time to build that bridge to ask me a question or show me something in the Bible I had not considered. It actually started back uh, even when I was in middle school in seventh grade. had a Christian friend, my best friend Tommy, and he found out I was a Latter-day Saint, uh, and he, he figured that he figured out that was the Mormons. Well, he, he, said, he, he asked me, he says, well, James, you, you guys believe in a different God than we do. And I said, no, we believe the same thing you do. And he said, no, I looked you up in the encyclopedia. <laughs> so and he great. showed me the Bible, and he showed me some Bible verses. And so that was kind of the starting point. And over the years, God just placed different people in my life until I came to the point where I realized I made that transition from Mormonism to Christianity, realizing that my salvation has to be based not on my church, not on my obedience to laws and ordinances, not on going through the secret Mormon temple ritual, but it has to be based on Christ alone. So it was a process to get there. Now, last night I had the privilege of attending one of your seminars, and you are not only the president of Watchman Fellowship, you also travel around and speak. You're an author, and you actually took us through uh, your conversion from Mormonism to Christianity, and while you were doing that, it was very enlightening as you revealed to us some of the things uh, in your seminar that show what Mormonism really teaches it and contrasted that with the Bible. Can you in, in, I know we spent, we spent two hours doing this. Can you take two minutes and talk a little bit about yeah. that, uh, that process for you and, and the truth there? Yeah, well, well, Mormonism seems so very Christian because they use right. a lot of the right words. Um, uh, heaven, uh, God, uh, Scripture. The problem is oftentimes a counterfeit Christian group might use the right words but with the wrong definitions. Mm. Our vocabulary but their own dictionary. Defining so it all if you ask me as a Mormon, do I believe in the Scriptures? Sure, but define Scripture. Book of Mormon, Doctrine and Covenants. See, people think Bible when you say Scripture. Well, that was one of our Scriptures. And so when you understand the, the, the real theology of it, I was taught as a Mormon that God, before He was God, He was once actually a man mm. on another earth, that He's married. In, in, in my doctrine, in Mormonism, you have both Heavenly Father and His wife, Heavenly Mother. Uh, I was taught that we are all spirit children of these parents, uh, eternal parents, Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother. I was taught that, that our purpose on life uh, is to obey all of God's laws, and part of that is to be worthy enough to go into the temple. This is very important because your salvation, ultimately, where you end up is whether or not you're worthy to go into the temple. And while you know there are you know, over 15 million uh, Mormons in the world, the, the, most of them never get to go in the temple. You have to wow. earn that right. You can't drink coffee or tea. You have to be a full tithe payer. There's a whole list of things you have to do. 
But if you can do these things, this is what I was taught. The reason I was striving so hard and working so hard, if I could achieve that, eventually I was told I could become a God myself one day. That me and my wife would be married for all eternity in the Mormon temple, and then we would be given our own earth. We would populate that with million, billions of our spirit children. Wow. And the whole system starts all over again. So our God was once a man, but we too can become gods. One of, one of the Mormon prophets, Lorenzo Snow, uh, explained it this way. He said, as man is, God once was. As God is, man may become. Now, that's what I was striving for, the celestial kingdom, become a god. But I had some Christian friends that explained to me that there was only one true God. Mm. And that job is taken. <laughs> yeah. you don't even ask for an application. So I, I didn't realize at the time it's kind of a, it's really a major sin to want to be a God. Now at the time I thought, well, you at least have some ambition. Try for it, even if you don't get it. But that was how Satan tempted Eve in the Garden of Eden. You will not surely die, he told her. Your eyes will be open and you will be like, like God. God. Satan falls the same way, wanting to be like the Most High. But I didn't realize that the Bible uh, warns against this idea of deification or trying to become a God yourself. And ultimately, all sin, in a sense, is trying to be your own God. Ultimately, that's the truth. Now, some people would say, well, Mormonism is, is, is Christian. Other people say, no, Mormonism is a cult. Can you address that? Would you classify Mormonism in the, in, in the classification of a cult? A cult. Now, what we have to do, Eric, we have to be very careful what we mean by the word cult. In our culture today, some people think the media, they talk about cults. They're talking about a religion that commits mass suicide. Oh. Or, or maybe they confuse it with the occult, and they mm. think practicing witchcraft or Satanism. Certainly, Mormonism isn't that kind of cult. But if you're talking about a theological cult, now by that I mean a group that claims to be Christian, but deviates on the essential doctrines, not, not secondary issues. You know, all Christians have disagreements about some things, and nobody agrees on all their doctrine. But on the essential doctrines, who is God? Who is Jesus Christ? How does a person receive forgiveness of sin? We're united on that. When a, when a group claims to be Christian, but deviates on any of those essentials, I would say absolutely, you have a theological cult at that point. Wow, now what are the ways that we should identify a cult. You actually went into this uh, a little bit uh, in, your, in your presentation. I found it fascinating. You said, look, it's easy. Here's, here's an easy, surefire method to understand if you're dealing with somebody who's in a cult or not. Can you address that? Yeah, it, 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 it is overwhelming. We, you know, at our offices back in Texas, we have files on thousands of religions and information. Wow. So it's like daunting to try to, how you keep up with it. So <laughs> you I don't forget just, it. <laughs> you don't just deal with Mormonism, you oh, deal with no, all of it. No, all kinds of cults and sects and religions, the occult, we deal with it all. And so what, what happens is to simplify it, if you think, don't think about the thousands of groups, but think about the four functions of math. Does the group in question add to God's word with new scripture? Mm. Now, they'll come along and say, they'll say, oh, the Bible's wonderful. You should always read the Bible, but. <laughs> See, watch you out. Got but <laughs> but the Bi well, they might say the Bible's not translated correctly, or the Bible's been changed through the centuries, or they might say, as the Jehovah's Witnesses do, the Bible's God's Word, but you cannot understand it unless you also have the Watchtower mm. magazine to go with it. In some way, either, uh, either explicitly or subtly, they're going to add to God's Word with new scripture. They're going to subtract from who Jesus is. They're going to, again, no group's going to say that we hate Jesus. What they're going to say is that Jesus is either not, not fully human or more likely what we find today is they're going to say Jesus is not God. He's just an angel or Jesus was a great man, a good teacher, a prophet. The Muslims will say he was a great prophet but not God. Mm. Now once you subtract from the deity of Christ or the humanity of Christ, well you have, you don't have the correct Jesus. You have a, a, um, a deadly case of mistaken identity at this point. Yeah. <laughs> so add to God's Word with new scripture, subtract from Jesus, multiply the requirements of salvation. Oh. Now the Bible says we're saved by grace through faith alone. What the, the counterfeit Christians will do, a cult will do this too, they'll come along and say, in order to be saved, they'll say Jesus is a good start, but Jesus alone cannot save you. You need Jesus plus good works. Mm. You say, well, what good works? That's going to depend on which cult you join. 
Now, if you become a Jehovah's Witness, you'll find that your salvation is linked to magazine distribution. You cannot have eternal life or have your sins forgiven with Jesus alone. You must also be a proclaimer of the kingdom going door to door. That's why every Jehovah's Witness goes door to door. Their salvation hangs in the balance. As a Mormon, I was taught that my salvation was based on Jesus plus being worthy to go into the secret Mormon temple ritual to obey all the laws and ordinances of the gospel. So what they would tell me is that Christ, His atonement is necessary to save me, but not sufficient. You need Jesus plus. So it's mm -hmm. multiplying the requirements of salvation. And then the fourth one is division. Does the group in question divide their followers' loyalties? Now this is kind of the mystical one. Because a cult will come, subtle, but they'll say, they'll say, Eric, if you want to have eternal life, even if you do all the good works we're telling you, you still won't have eternal life unless you do them with us. We are the only true church. We are the only factory authorized distributors of eternal life. So to get to God, you've got to come through us. Now what this does is it, it divides the followers loyalties by teaching them you can't be loyal to God unless you're loyal to me, to our group. And the biblical principle that's in violation is the principle of mediatorship because the Bible tells us clearly there's only one mediator between God and men, the man, man Christ Jesus. Jesus. Beware of any organization, any minister, any, any religious leader that tries to step between you and God and say, oh, you want to talk to God? Well, you've got to come through me. I, you know, I'll make an appointment for you, but you can't go directly <laughs> to God. That is dividing the followers loyalties. Wow, so anything that adds, subtracts, multiplies, or divides, that's an easy way to understand yes. that. If you want to get more information, uh, James Walker's ministry, watchman.org, you can actually sign up and get absolutely free. They send out profiles once a month on different ministry or different uh, uh, world religions, cults. Sex, um, you guys cover yoga. doctrines and practices. All kinds of stuff. So if you want to get those, I encourage you to go to watchman.org and sign up for those right now. Battleship Apologetics, this season on Creation Today, starting August 20th at creationtoday.org.